Welcome to the obnoxious synopsis where we take a chance on the news. Economics. Speaking of economics, uh, there's an article out earlier this week uh, about uh, labor shortages and uh, them using uh, criminals and former criminals in order to staff their uh, their employee roster. Um, well, so this article mostly focused on like waste management companies for the most part. And uh, right. it had talked about a bunch of different stuff like uh, the Teamsters being involved and all that. And what it came down to more than anything was that these people weren't uh, going back to work and they had a worker shortage because they weren't paying people a livable wage. So they said, okay, well, if we're not gonna be able to get people back, I guess I'm supposing that they, this all happened kind of because of the pandemic and kind of because people are greedy whores. Um, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, but because that happened, um, a lot of people didn't wanna come back. And um, I just found it interesting that like, um, Republicans were they they had Republicans in there saying like um as far as the, the I should say, I should say Republicans as in like the actual people in charge of the state or the congressman or whatever not Republicans on the ground or whatever but they were sitting there saying like oh you know this the immigrants are taking your jobs and they don't want to do it because they're getting so much unemployment and this and that and I was like isn't that funny that the same people who are blaming immigrants and the government for helping out are the same people who side with the executives and don't want to help you get your money so I was like, that's just kind of, I like, yo, yeah, how can you, this, this is their logic is, go ahead, man. I don't yeah. I even... well, Look, my, my first thought was when you gave the example of the Teamsters and bringing in criminals, I was like, well, I mean, that's nothing new for the Teamsters, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but let me stop, because my dad, my dad and all my family are truck drivers, but I just, I had to say that, man. But, but the whole thing to me is just, I, I, like I said, I'm kind of torn about the article in general, simply because I get the, the point the article was trying to make that companies are so unscrupulous that and so concerned with the bottom line, their only factor is the money, right? And they don't want to pay people a living wage. So they're unable to find people to work for these, what are tantamount to substandard wages. So I, I get that. And I get that the article is accurate about that. And I think that that, that you know, that, that's true. But the other side of this is you're talking about a business. Mm -hmm. And I am a businessman, but I, I care about people. But at the same token, if I can hire someone to do all the same work you do for three cents an hour and happens to be a criminal, well, then I guess you're not going to get $10 an hour. Because as a business person, my only goal here is to make money. If it's to tell you one thing and do another and makes my company money, well, then that's what I would do as a business person. Mm. It, it, it's a sad that as a country, we look to the wealthy and corporations to be the moral compass for the way that we act when those are the main individuals who clearly act contrary to what is best for <laughs> everyone. Like you Talk can't be nice, wealthy. Right, yeah, you, you can't be you can't be worth 200 billion dollars and just be the most generous and kind person there ever was because you know what you would have never amassed 200 billion dollars. you as a person me as a person even your dad as thrifty as he is he could never amount amass that amount of money because he has too much of a heart and soul and care of fellow people to see any value in piling it up behind him with the rest of the money Mm. Right. It's just it's not a normal person's perspective, which is why that when we talk about the wealthy, we talk about one, the top one percent or the top five percent, because only a small segment of people are like that. I would be willing to bet you that there are more sociopaths percentage wise in this country than there are wealthy people, which shows you exactly how crazy you have to be to reach that level of wealth. Right? Like, there, are, there are more people out here just randomly killing people in the streets than there are uh, billionaires, right? And, and that's how crazy you gotta be to be that. It just doesn't happen you know, overnight. You, you come in with this idea, I'm gonna start the greatest uh, mail order business from my garage today. Everyone's gonna laugh you out of the place, but here 30 years later, now you're laughing at him because his, jet, cause his uh, you know, his, uh, spaceship looks like a giant dildo with tiny <laughs> balls you know so like that's you got to be crazy to do that shit because even like you or i if we'd have seen the drawings of that shit we're like no bro you're gonna have to fix this this is definitely like this is gonna all have to you know it's got to look different than this they're gonna be rag drilling me online and he's just like nah this is perfect you know 
What I hear so, somebody say, they said uh, he just he just wanted to put the tip in the space. <laughs> I but the point is, is that <laughs> point is, is that you know, like I, I just think you know, I think that our biggest problem is that we look at from a business standpoint, our view of what's what success is is just based off of money. And I think a lot of times, right. like you said, we adapt those as like the morals for the country. And it's like, so the more money you make, the better person you are. And it's like that's not that's not a no. way to. And I think that we should just view. I think business in general in general should be viewed differently in terms of what makes a successful business. Like Ben and Jerry's is very successful and they're, they had, they seem to have a heart. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying everyone can be Ben and Jerry's. I'm just saying like, I would like for them to have more of a morale, but when the, when, when the, when the winners and losers are chosen by who has the most money, then what do you expect people to act like? Well, you said uh, you made a good example there, Ben and Jerry's. Okay. Ben and Jerry's. Um, yes, they've been a very profitable country, uh, company, yeah. but I can assure you, they wish they'd have shut the hell up as it pertained to Israel, right? <laughs> their ass has been all over the news and getting boycotted every which way. And I can assure you at the next owner's meeting or shareholders meeting, there's going to be talk of maybe we should keep our damn mouth shut about pol political issues and the like, because while it has benefited us some, as we've seen companies like Nike do, um, but it has also cost us. And I, and I think when you try to play it both sides, you wind up sometimes getting burned and sometimes it can cost you more than you make by doing it. But from a business perspective, I see why they do it. I mean, I would never, if I were running a business, my answer to a, to any problem would not be, I will withdraw my products from an area. <laughs> that would not be maybe yeah. give them away free in the area you support. I, I don't know, but I would, it would not entail removing my products and the option for people to buy them. That's well, just, you know, business is about money. You either make money or you don't. It's not a moral competition. It's only like that because the media makes it so. And people want to believe that those who have wealth, they achieved it because they're smarter and they know better. And the truth is that they don't. They may just be uh, an idiot savant about a particular thing. And they're really good at it. Like I know plenty of basketball players are going to make 10 times my income. And you know what? Half of them can't tie their shoes. That's just, uh, but doesn't doesn't mean they're bad people. They deserve the money. They're you know part of an enterprise. They should be paid. But at the same token, it doesn't make them smart about it. You know, and that that's where I think the this this branching this intersection occurs, where um, you know the split occurs, where people sort of see wealth and intelligence and morals yeah. as is all combined and they're totally unrelated. They're just, they may look like it from this angle that they're all on the same, but on, from this angle, you see yeah. they're on whole different planes. Yeah. So. I, I don't know, Rob, I don't think Ben and Jerry's gonna melt away on this one. Anyway. No, I don't so think so. <laughs> <laughs> Probably wasn't so that good there anyway, right? That's cow's milk, right? So I don't know. Maybe they got a soy base. I don't know, let me stop. Chunky monkey. Okay, never no, 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 no. <laughs> So <laughs> with all that said, man, let's go ahead and go to the weather. Uh, report with, uh, who is it, uh, Tyrone. Tyrone, do you have the weather for us? Uh, Tyrone, oh. This is Tyrone with the weather. I'm in a hot air balloon over 270 spur. Dark clouds are rolling in and I see some lightning. Captain Steve says everything is fine though, but he is slurring his words, having drank half a bottle of hen dog on the way up. I'm sorry? But it looks to me like storms are rolling in this evening. Back to you. My God. <laughs> Welcome to the obnoxious synopsis. We take a chance on the news. Uh, sports. All right. So in the news this week, I saw an article, a uh, quote from Nick Saban, talking about Bryce Young approaching a million dollars in name and likeness deals. Okay, he has not played a single down for Alabama. Um, what I'd like to say about that is, look how they have ripped off these kids for the better part of 60 plus years or however many hell years it's been going on. It's got to be in the damn billions, eclipsing trillions. You mean to tell me Michael Jordan's name and likeness in 84 wasn't worth something? Oh my God. You mean to tell me that all of these people that have come from just since then, when Mike, Mike, to me, Michael Jordan is the, is the goat, not because people say, well, 
uh, you know, some of LeBron's stats are better. Or even if LeBron won six championships, he'd be the best. The fact is, is Michael Jordan is like Tiger Woods. He took the sport from one level to another level. No one has come along since that's taken it to another level. It's at the level Michael Jordan took it to, and it's sitting there. Someone will come along someday, but he ain't on the court right now, and he ain't been there since Michael left. People have come along and helped to maintain it. LeBron, Kobe, no one has brought it from, you know, little short, tight-ass shorts and half-dark arenas and, and, you know, brought class, status, stature, took it from being a United States sports to an entire world to where a country like Nigeria can kick our ass of our all-star team, okay? Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, we would have beat them by 100 points, and that would have been with the second and the third team. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's something that no one has done. So that has value. Tiger Woods is the same for golf. People were making 100000 a tournament. Now they make a million. They don't make two million still because no one's taking it to the next level, but mm -hmm. they will. This name and likeness sheds light on how, with, with, in sports, these kids have been taken advantage of for so many years. They go out there, they play their hearts out, they get injured, they get nothing for it, and they get thrown off the team in those scholarships. Like, it's just egregious what the NCAA has done. They should go back and start to pay some of these kids, particularly those that have been injured. I mean, the, the story is great that now these kids can profit off of their name and likeness, as they should. But it's also a horrifying story about how the NCAA has simply taken advantage of these kids and did not change that until they were forced to do so. And the colleges are part and parcel of that, all the while raising tuition on the rest of us while making millions in the background. It's sickening. I mean, the whole thing just makes me sick to my stomach other than seeing these kids profit from it at this point in time. Well, well, look, man, like it was so weird. The first thing that popped in my head when I read this article was marijuana. Because it's right. like, as soon as marijuana became legal, you had these people who were sitting there benefiting from <laughs> benefiting from it being illegal, be the first ones to benefit from it when it was legal. You know what I mean? Like it, it was just like of all the people, of all the places, Alabama's quarterback is going to be the first guy with a million. Like they don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, like it's just the whole thing. Uh, and they figured that out pretty quickly. It's almost as if they were paying people the whole time. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Alabama was just like, oh, so we got to give him a million of the money. We were only going to give him 200,000. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, was it? Oh, so we don't have to get someone else paid. Oh, <laughs> oh this is great. Yeah, I never <laughs> thought of this. <laughs> the boots was like, you know what? This isn't so bad after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let Pepsi pay him. <laughs> <laughs> now all I got to do is pay for the chairs. I don't have to pay for the, I don't have to pay for the linebacker. Yeah, I just got to pay to get him here. The rest of it's all on them. This this is really working out for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, you know, it was just so, like you said, like, as soon as I heard it, you know, I was like, man, they have, I mean, it's so, it's so corrupt, man. It's so, it's so corrupt. I just. But what do you think it will be like for the future of um, historically black colleges? Now that the kids, you don't have to go to Alabama to have your name in lights and make money, right? You just need to Don't. produce and you you can use that money as part of your marketing plan. Yes, it's great to go to Alabama. You can make a million, whereas maybe at Howard, you only get you know a half a million or maybe even less than that. But at the same token, it's in most kids' cases going to college, it's gonna be more money than you've ever dreamed and will make on any job just for being that advertisement and letting them use your likeness. It's that's a that's a great point though, Rob, because I mean like just think about that from this because it's because it's like we said the school isn't necessarily paying them. It's like sponsors and stuff from around the town. If you're cool with only making and I only making <laughs> yeah. thirty thousand dollars like a year in a place where you're gonna be treated like everybody else and it's gonna be real cool, then I mean most people would be like, yeah, I'll sign me up especially at like yeah. 19 years old and you ball, you're balling at that point, like $300 is balling in college. So. Yeah. It, but also think about what you can do for yourself. Right. Yeah. So this kid's getting a million dollars. What could he buy with that? To, he could buy coaching from some of the top coach. Obviously Alabama has some of the top coaches yeah. in the land, but they're like anybody else. 
an expert is typically an expert in, from their vision and perspective of the, the way that this task or operation works. They may not understand or even try to understand other people's perspective that can also be valuable. So it can be pigeonholed in um, with what they do and why, when you could be, uh, you know, uh, you could be a passer, you could be a runner, you yeah. could be an option quarterback. You can learn about all those things from the best around with that type of money. LeBron yeah. says he spends a million dollars a year on his body and, and fitness. So imagine what he must spend on his mind and peace and preparation to do the physical part. And it's got yeah. to be twice that easily because it doesn't matter what you do physically. If your mind's not there, it's never going to never going to accumulate into something valuable for you. It's just a waste of time. You've got to have your head in the game. I feel terrible for Reggie Bush, man, because God knows how much <laughs> him, and Matt, him and Matt Liner wouldn't even have had to go to the NFL. They would have. I don't feel money. bad for Reggie Bush because Reggie Bush got his money. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> he did. He did. He paid that man his money. But I mean, like, yo, Reggie. I already Bush, got paid. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie Bush was ridiculous. They told it. They took that man's Heisman. How dare he they? He should bro? have it back now, though, right? I hope so. How dare they? How yep. dare they? Yup. That's enough of it. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to traffic, man. We're gonna now go to traffic with Jerome. Jerome, uh, what, what's it like? This is Jerome on 270 South. The traffic is backed up for miles. I'm hearing reports of a hot air balloon crashed down on the highway. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of drunk ass would be out in the hot air balloon in this type of weather, but I pray that they're okay. Back to you. Wait a second. Is that the same hot air balloon that was? It's possible. Gotta go. Oh God. Okay. Welcome to the obnoxious synopsis where we take a chance on the news. Entertainment. Speaking of entertainment, I wanted to talk about Van Jones for a second. Van Jones, the uh, the magical safe Negro. Um, Bezos <laughs> doing his doing his thing, uh, putting the tip in the space, screwing screwing the atmosphere. This time, literally. Um, <laughs> that's enough, enough of those. Enough penis jokes. But so so he 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 just after he got down, he decided to uh, give out some money to two people that he created this charity for or uh, this, these, fun, these funds for, it was like $100 million, something absurd like that. And one of the recipients is a, a guy who's kind of known as a- um... Uncle Tom. Oh, um, well, I mean like- I, not, I the, not the Uncle Tom of the books, but you know, <laughs> the kind we all talk about. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I'm not, I don't feel that harshly towards Van Jones, but he is a very safe, safe Negro. Um, he says a lot of things that, um, that make white people feel comfortable. Not that I'm here to make people, white people feel uncomfortable. I'm just saying, like, yeah, he says a lot of things that are that are said in a way where you're like, you, you twist your you twist your head, like, mm, I don't know, that doesn't sound very right to me. Like the whole yeah. thing where Trump became president tonight, and it was like, really, that's what you're gonna you're gonna say that? So he, he's had some questionable things, and I found it interesting yeah. that um, his organization, which I didn't know anything about, so shout out to him to actually like actually doing something is a bipartisan organization with a solution of combating the criminal justice system. He said it's bipartisan. I was like, you know what will work out for the criminal justice system? Taking that money that Bezos gave you and giving it to the people so that way they don't have to rob and steal and kill people in order to make ends meet. What about you though, Rob? I mean, I'm, I'm of a different sort with Van Jones. I feel <laughs> like he's like a like a black Rick Santorum to me. He just Ooh, whoa. just doesn't he just whoa. doesn't belong. Like I mean, he, he's a man to me with no home. Like you know, in the black community, you try to do these things to try to help, but the means you go about them matter. <clears throat> it matters that you know, like, and not to say Van Jones did, but it matters if you buy ice cream with KKK money. I'm sorry, it just does. Huh. And as far as like this story here. To me, this story is not as much about Van Jones as it is about uh, Jeff Bezos. So Jeff Bezos' ex-wife has already given away $5 billion. And you know what she got back? Another $5 billion in returns on her investments. So she really didn't even have to give a penny out of her pocket to accumulate this exact same amount of wealth that she gave away. That's not to disparage her. That's to say that's the way the Lord works. Mm. You take and you do his work and you're going to get that money back. And you're going to get it back in, in, in ways that are obvious to you. It may not happen in her, like in her case, where it's simple math. 
It can be other means, good fortune, more mm -hmm. days in your life, whatever. Mm -hmm. But in her case, as an example to others, I'm sure that that, that was the Lord's actions there to say, see, it doesn't hurt to give. Now here comes this mother, mother ah! dude here. And <laughs> it's a family show. Now, now, now he's worth, you know, what he only gave her a pittance of the money to begin with, relatively speaking. Well, and so, you know, yeah, it's a lot of money, but it wasn't half, right? Was she was and, she shooting in the gym with him before we go on? Was she shooting in the gym with him? Or oh, did she that, that's him? a whole other one. And that's, <laughs> that'd take a lot longer because I agree with that. But at the same token, it's harder to separate this type of thing, right? Than it is uh -huh. that. That's to me is more. I think more obvious as to what's involved, and you know. But in in their case, it's like even the way he did her, right? <laughs> it was like awful. And so she didn't get half and, and she was much more generous than he. That hundred million dollars is, is nothing to him. It's the equivalent of you or I giving someone we pass in the street a dollar. Like even to you and I, it would be an insult to give someone a dollar, right? And that's essentially what he's done. But the thing about it is if I remember right, when I read another article, it caused him something like $5 billion to do this, but the government also paid like $6 billion. Right. That's correct. So why don't you, unless you gave back $6 billion, you haven't done a damn thing, except eat up taxpayers' money for a little trip for you and your buddies. And so I'm, I'm unimpressed by all this, them going to space. That, that doesn't impress me. With enough money, I could fly to Mars. Does that make me, a, make me some kind of astronaut, a superhero? Hell no, it means I got a lot of money. That's all it means. As a matter yeah. of fact, they were they were having some kind of debate. I heard this uh, this thing where they're having a debate. They were like, "Does this technically make him an astronaut? Because you're supposed to be technically an astronaut when you go up." They're like, "I think we're gonna come up with new terms after this after this yeah. kind of normalized, like people who are professionals and then people who are going up mm -hmm. and just putting their tip in." Uh, well, the argument was, did they really even go into space, right? Because that I know they were saying that about. Um, Virgin Galactic flight, technically not, you're not in space. Yeah, right? I mean, they were weightless to give them credit. They were weightless, I guess. The you can go weightless by taking off in the plane and dropping down fast. I'm unimpressed by that shit. You, you, well. you ain't done nothing. You, but his, <laughs> Bezos' whole flight was 11 minutes. I ain't impressed, bro. That's just not impressive to me. I mean, I'm sorry. For $11 billion, I would have wanted to be up there at least a couple of days. You know, I, I spent three hundred dollars to stay at a crap ass hotel in Martinsville. So surely, I would, <laughs> you know, eleven billion dollars. I'm thinking, you know, maybe we get in some sites. You know, maybe spacewalk a minute or two. Nah, I flew up, flew back. You know, so. But and you, then how he landed, I was like, "What a crap ass way to come down, man! You come and crash into the earth." I mean, you'd have like some some retro jets or something. I mean, like I, just, I saw the way just it fell on the, just fell on the ground. Yeah, I saw the way it hit. I was like, "Ooh, that didn't look like that." No, I bet it broke a leg. <laughs> My first thought was, are you going to survive this? When I was watching it, tracking it coming down, I was like, do they have some sort of retro jets or another shoot if coming I, out? Because I was like 18 year old, I would have came out with like my neck and my back. <laughs> you know, like the fat boys with the seat collar on talking about, did you see how you hit me in the back? Bezos, you son of a <laughs> Come right out. Ah, oh, 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 man. <laughs> it's going to cost you. <laughs> but yeah, man, that, I, that's a that's a that's a cool point. But I mean, like, the one thing you forgot is that you can't go into outer space and keep a cowboy hat on because you got to put it on over the. You know, <laughs> so there's no way he could have gone. Sa Sandy did on SpongeBob, bro, walking around that astronaut suit all the time with cowboy hat on. I'm always, see, sure. I'm not even impressed with that. Even Sandy could do that. <laughs> she sure did, y'all. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's ridiculous that's funny yeah but van jones van jones i mean shout out to him for what he's trying to do sometimes you have to be within the belly of the beast to kill the beast right so i get that but there's also in his case there are people watching and what you say and do means more than than that you know Yes, you might accomplish some things, but what could you accomplish if you were really looking at it, how people see it and moved in those directions? It's not to say that, you know, Bezos offers you $100 million to yep. do whatever you want for social justice and you turn it down. No, this is where you go, Jeff, you're worth. Like if it were me, my first thing is like, 
bro, you worth two hundred billion dollars. This is like giving me a ten dollar bill. Like, I mean, come <laughs> on, man. I mean, you can't even make it a billion. I mean, your, your ex wife just gave five billion. You can't even give a billion. Come on, man. And it doesn't have to be controlled by me. It could be, you know, it could be ten other people that you know you give a hundred million dollars to. But, but man, I'm telling you, they're gonna rip you a new one in the press if you come out with a hundred million. You're gonna look like crap. What I, what I don't understand is the idea of it being a bipartisan solution. Like, uh, what what's the deal with? I don't. I'm not saying that to say that you can't reach a common ground, whatever, whatever. But it's like, who who cares if it's a bipartisan solution as long as it's a solution that works? Like to me, that's what that's what more matters. So they're sitting there trying to. This is such a Van Jones thing to do with the appeasement of somebody who who gives a shit if you appease him. I'm sorry. Who who cares if you appease him, right? You know, it's like to me the end goal is to is to do the solution whether the person's with you or not is on them that's not on you you don't go out here seeking to grab people who have to be convinced of your goals like you should just go out there with the people who are riding with you and go forward from there i just don't understand the bipartisan part but that's that's his business the the bipartisan the bipartisanship piece i, I get why you put it there but the fact is is it doesn't exist in America today because the simple fact is Republicans want things that Democrats do not want. They're mutually exclusive. I don't see anything coming along that's bipartisan. What I see is Democrats coming with a bunch of stuff and then Republicans beating it down till it's almost nothing and then still not voting for it or just voting for it just enough to pass. That's not bipartisan. That is called keeping tabs on people so they don't run free and do these programs that will be successful and help people and pretty much eliminate the uh, ability of Republicans to garner any national support. Because at the end of the day, people want solutions and they may be Republicans and they may be Democrats, but they right. want solutions. And if they right. get solutions, they're not gonna care who they came from or that you called them bipartisan. But the fact is, is if you continue like Democrats have done so far and just keep kowtowing to the, you know, to the filibuster and these things, the people are not going to get the things they want. And they're going to say, OK, when I vote for Republicans, maybe they don't do all the things I want, but they get things done. When I vote for Democrats, they sell me these pipe dreams and then I will willing to put their um, mustard behind what it takes to bring these things to fruition. If I'm elected and I'm in any position. I'll simply do whatever legal thing avails itself to me to be able to bring to fruition the things that I committed to do. I don't care if I could do it with just two of us voting for it. If that's the case, so be it. I got sent here to take care of the people in my constituency. And, you know, you sit here and you look at people like Joe Manchin. We don't want the federal money. You know what? Take a take a referendum with your state and see what the answer is to that. They're <laughs> going to want that money, bro. And that's you, you can't buy meth with good looks. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you know how hard you try, Rob. And that's the bipartisanship, right? The people, if if seventy percent of people in general say, "Yeah, this is a good idea," that's the bipartisanship you should be looking for. Not the not yeah. people like Ho Ho Mansion. Hashtag Ho Mansion. Remember to do that on Twitter. All right. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, we got into the just saying portion of the show. Rob, do you have a just saying? I'm just saying investing and cryptocurrency and real estate are all gambling. And I know I've said, just said this before and I'm saying it again because I sit here every week and I look for some place to put money. And then at the end of the week, I do the same thing. I stare at it in my savings account. <laughs> so I'm like, Man, I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what's going to happen. And, you know, at some point, this country and the world in general has to fall back on reality and the fundamentals that brought these things to be successful. And, you know, some things just don't make sense. There, there are cryptocurrencies out there that were made as a joke. You know, Dogecoin, Dogecoin. was made as a joke. It's yep. worth $40 billion. Is it? It's a stupid thing to invest money in. It's a <laughs> joke. It serves no purpose. Yeah, it's just a, <laughs> it's, it's some ridiculous amount of money. I mean, it's just, it's just so, it's so stupid. And it makes it so difficult for people to, to be able to retire at some point because you have no idea where to invest. And, you know, even those that are best in these fields have no idea what's going on, whether things are going up or down. I mean, they've been 
calling them to go down for ages and nothing's happened and stock markets up to about what 30 i mean the dow's up to thirty four thousand. Mm-hmm. i mean every chart i've seen anywhere says the the 12 year return on where the market is right now is like negative six percent you invest today 12 years from now you got a return of negative six percent that's every chart that i've seen that like and they have charts of every data point of every year where the Dow was and the returns for since its inception. And it's a very clear chart. This is, unless there's some underlying current that, you know, just a normal person knows nothing about, it's destined to, to have a horrifying correction, cryptocurrency included, and it is gonna wipe out fortunes like nobody's business. And I'll just be sitting here with my little bank account, staring at it and watching it happen, so. I'm just saying it's a it's a fraud and gambling. That's all. Um, so my my just saying is, uh, you know, man, I, this this whole the the Maria Taylor thing. Shout out to her for leaving ESPN. Um, and it. So the 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 thing that's lost to a lot of people about this story is that that whole thing happened like a year ago. Number one. Right. Um, and there's a lot of nuance to it too. I'm not here to uh, cape for Rachel Nichols or anything, but I mean, like, she's she's had, at least from the past interactions that I've seen her have, uh, it kind of shocked me that she would say anything even close to that, um, just based on the how I knew her and stuff like that. As <laughs> newer, like from a television yeah. personality, I should say. Um, right. And I thought the way that they ESPN handled it was 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 terrible, and they've been handling black talent terribly forever like that's why Stuart Scott was seen as so great because he was able to crawl through all that crap and become Stuart Scott you know what I mean um but I just wanted to take this opportunity to shout out Maria Taylor for going out on the market betting on herself and she's about to be the new Oprah she might get on with Jamel Hill that's a rumor that I'm starting so you remember where you heard it first and so (laughs) I'm just saying Maria Taylor go out there get your money the finals was dope Shout out to Giannis for doing it. That was the old stuff. Haven't seen that since the early 90s, man. So that's that. Oh, Sounds sorry. good. Sorry about that, Dirk. I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We're out. Peace. Peace.